Good morning, everyone, and welcome as you join us this morning for our service of morning prayer on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter, otherwise known as Rogation Sunday. If you have a prayer book at home, you're very welcome to join us in the responses and to follow that from page 101 in the Green Prayer Book. And we begin with the greeting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christine is now going to lead us in song, Faithful One. Faithful One, so Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you and against, against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins 
for the, for the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us, us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We will now say together the Jubilate, which you can find on page 104 in your prayer book. O oh, shout, shout to the, the Lord in triumph, triumph all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 66, and you can find it on page 663 of your prayer book. We are reading verses 7 to 18, and we will read them all together. Bless As our God, God o you, you peoples, peoples make, make the voice of his praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and suffers not our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us, you have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare, you laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads, we went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of liberty. I will come into your house with burnt offerings, and will, I will pay, pay you my, my vows, which my, my lips uttered, and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. And I will offer you fat burnt sacrifices with the smoke of rams. I will sacrifice oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had nursed evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth God has heard me. He has heeded the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his loving mercy from me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Bible reading today is written in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, and reading from verse 22. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as he went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, 
He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and the truth of the scriptures. We pray now as we meet around them that you will speak to us Speak into our hearts and lives. May our minds and hearts respond to you in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thorpe Park, which is just outside London, is a famous place for roller coasters in Great Britain. Some of you may be aware of my love for roller coaster parks enjoying the exhilaration and the adrenaline rush that they bring. Or for some of you, it might scare the life out of you. But in Thorpe Park, they do have some of the best rides in the whole of, the great, of great Britain. And there's a particular ride there, I don't know if it still exists or not, called the Saw Ride. And for me, it was the greatest and most exhilarating ride I'd been on as regards roller coasters. There's one particular piece on the track as you sit in your little car and fly around this thing. It goes completely vertical, right up, totally vertical. And you're sitting in this car, obviously your back with the power of gravity pulling you to the base of the car and you're looking straight up into the sky. And at the very top of this vertical climb is a little bend. And this little bend does not level out. It simply brings you back down, this time vertically, looking at the ground. And gravity is pulling you, of course, forward in the car. And as the speed builds and builds, you think you're going to smash into the ground below. Such is the exhilaration and adrenaline rush the ride has. But it does, of course, level out at the bottom. And on you go on your merry way. I knew about the saw ride, but I'd never experienced it before. I knew a lot about it, but I had to actually sit in the car and go round the track to actually experience it. I had to put my foot inside that car and take off. There was no stopping then. It had to be experienced as I went off. Today our text is from Acts 17. The background to this is Paul is in Athens in Greece. He is responding to a lot of the talk going on in Athens at the time. And he finds, as he walks through the city, many stone gods, many different things set up for different gods. And he finds a certain altar or stone inscribed to an unknown god. And he wants to address the people of Athens about this so-called unknown god. Paul finds many forms of belief in Athens. In ancient Greece, they were a very pioneering people. They were highly intelligent. They were philosophers, inventors. They did lots of wonderful things in their day. 
Yet in religious matters, there was this possibility of this God that they couldn't put a name on. They believed in all sorts of, a, a certain pantheon of all sorts of gods, but this particular one they had on a stone to an unknown God. Perhaps they couldn't figure out who he actually was. Or perhaps somebody in Athens had heard at one time that there was a God in Israel, Yahweh, as he was known. Perhaps it was a reaching out to that particular God. Who knows? We are not sure. In verse 22, we read that the Athenians are religious people. Athenians, as Paul addresses them, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. They are religious, but they don't know the true God because they haven't experienced him. Like myself in the car on the saw ride, until I got in, I couldn't experience the ride. Knew all about it, but I had to get in to experience it. They are religious people in Athens, but they don't know the true God because they haven't experienced him. Being religious doesn't make us true followers of God. Some of us might use religion as a ritual, something that we do, a social nicety perhaps. Perhaps it's a form of law that keeps us rigid and within rules and regulations. Perhaps it's a badge to wear on our sleeve. These things can cause us do not hear or lose the message of the true gospel of Christ and what it actually requires. In verse 21 we read, which is just before the text that was read out this morning, it says these words. It gives us a bigger picture of where the Athenians were. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners living in Athens would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing something new. They loved to chat amongst each other and to share different new things that were happening. And Paul bringing this message about the true God was something they were willing to listen to. At least the people in Athens are open to hear the true gospel message. Paul then was on to unveil the true God that he can be experienced and therefore known in a personal way. After he sees this altar, this stone inscribed with, to an unknown God, he says to them, What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. I'm going to tell you about him, this true God. A person I knew some time ago was a great fan of Nelson Mandela. In fact, the knowledge he had of Mandela was immense. He knew things that many people didn't know about Mandela at all. In fact, it was almost obsessive. The, the things he read about him, his following on TV, and all sorts of different ways of catching up with the man and his history. But you know what? This person I knew never met Mandela knew everything about him, an obsessive relationship in getting to know all about him, but he never met him, interestingly so. Paul reveals God in these verses after he first addresses the Athenians. And he tells them that he is the creator of all, that he's the life giver to all, that he's the Lord of all nations. You know, many of us can accept that, that God is creator, life giver and Lord of the world and all nations. It doesn't mean that we know him or experience him. We can, like the Greeks, believe that we're all God's children as well. Look at verse 28. Paul says, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. We can believe we are God's children as well. 
and we can still be his children, but without a relationship with our Heavenly Father. And God cannot be contained or boxed in by our own views, our own beliefs, our own limited understanding of who he is, or by any human projection. Because Paul warns us there in verse 29, since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the arts or the imagination of mortals. He's beyond all of that. Much, much bigger. No human will ever fully describe him. But the crux of this whole text we find in the last two verses of which we read. Verses 30 and 31. Do listen carefully to these words. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. To experience and therefore know God is through Jesus. Now Jesus isn't mentioned by name here. He is simply called the man whom God has appointed. But we know it is Christ because he mentions that he's been raised from the dead. Through Jesus and through him alone can we experience and have knowledge of God personally for ourselves. No amount of religion, no amount of climbing and striving in this world to try and please God will ever get us there of a personal knowledge and experience of God. The word repent is mentioned here in verse 30. It's a word a lot of us don't like today. Sometimes the church general doesn't like to touch upon it. It's at the point of repentance that we begin our journey of experience and knowledge of God our Father. And repentance is threefold. There's three things we need to do for full repentance. We need to first realise the wrong that is within our lives or the wrong that we have done. And all of us have it. The Bible is clear on that. Even though we think we've led good lives without Christ at the helm of our lives as Saviour and Lord, we still fall short of God's glory. To repent is to realise our wrongs in thought, word and deed initially. Second part is to stop them. If we have something that we know is wrong and we continue to do it, we are to stop it. And finally, the part that a lot of people forget about is the U-turn. That we go not our own way anymore, but we do a complete U-turn and follow God. Now you might say that's a very, very high thing to attain to, but God is with us. By his Holy Spirit, he strengthens us to, able, to be able to do that. Yes, we're let him down over and over again. But that is what repentance is for. It is an ongoing ministry in all of our lives and should be. And we need to do it regularly to continue to have experience of Jesus in our lives, the experience of knowing God personally in our lives, to stay close to him. Children in relationship with their heavenly father are not astray or lost from that relationship. It begins our experience of God to repent before him. Jesus' grace, his mercy, and new life he offers at the cross. It's there that we repent, the foot of the cross, because Jesus absolves all. He takes it all away. Look at these words from verse 30 again. God has overlooked the times of human ignorance. He's willing to wash it all away. And he does that at the cross. If we come with true repentant hearts before him, he will forgive us and set us free. We will know what grace is. We will know what mercy is. And we will know what new life is. Jesus is alive and with us now. He asks us to come. Come in repentance if we need to do that today. 
It's something we need to do ongoingly anyway in our lives. But if we haven't done it before, he still calls out today to those of us who have not repented of things in our lives that are wrong. Jesus will wash them the way. He is the only way to gain us saving knowledge and the experience of an eternal relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word and we thank you for the truth of the gospel that Paul made it very clear that day in front of the Oropagus in Athens to all the people listening that yes, you are the creator, that you are the life giver, that you're the Lord of all nations, but you're much more than that, Lord. You're a God who has died for the whole of humankind to set us free from simply just head knowledge of you or simply knowing about you, but to have an experience of you. And by having that experience, we must come to the cross in repentance to know you as our Saviour and Lord, that you're a God who can be known, yes, the Creator and Almighty, but also a very imminent and personal God. And I pray that we know that in our lives today. And therefore, when we repent of all that is wrong in our lives, you fill us with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we can live for you in that power and knowing the gifts of salvation and eternal life. You give us when we know the forgiveness of sins. So Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're now going to sing again, and this time it is Lead Me, Lord. We continue our service on page 112 and we will say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done on earth, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for Rogation Sunday God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we will say together the third collect on page 114. Go before, before us, Lord, Lord in all our doings, with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally by your mercy attain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray at this time for our land. We live before you, Lord, all our people. We pray for all who are suffering at this time in this land and in the wider world during this pandemic. We remember those who are in hospital, in nursing care or at home who are suffering from COVID-19. We pray for your healing hand and your comfort, peace and strength with them. We pray for those who are ministering to them, those who continue to work in essential service and in front line, remembering those who work in both the NHS and HSE, and those who bring an essential service to others in need. We pray you protect them, guide and lead them in all that they are doing. And Father, we pray too for our governments, that they continue to make the right decisions in unprecedented territory for them as well. Guide and lead them in all that they have to do. Guide them in their thinking. That the right moves are always made for the betterment of the peoples of our lands. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we remember at this time those who are personal to us or not well in any way. Those in body, mind or spirit need your touch of healing. Praying, Father, for those who we cannot see or because they're in hospital or not allowed in. Father, we pray too for families still not able to see each other. Whether it's grandchildren or grandparents or brothers and sisters or whatever familial relationship it may be, or friend to friend, that as yet we cannot really go to each other's homes. We pray, Father, for those who are suffering in that way, and we pray for those who are under mental stress during this time, and we pray for healing. We pray for comfort and peace with them. And those who grieve, we remember those who have lost loved ones through the virus and through other ways. May they know your peace at this time. Father, we ask for your blessing, your comfort and strength with them. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And as we lift all our prayers before you, Father, we say the grace to each other. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning for our service. Again, you can join us as we meet around the scriptures at 11 a.m. on Wednesday. And uh, also next Sunday will be an all-age service. There won't be the little all-age talk that we have before our usual services on Sunday, as itself the main service will be an all-age service next Sunday at 11 a.m. Do look after yourselves and keep yourselves safe, and we'll pray the blessing uh, together. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.